So just to kick things off, can you tell me a little bit about how you first got involved with Polar Bear? Jeff and I have worked in the Arctic uh, over many years, over 20 years, really, and on a number of documentaries where we'd filmed sequences with polar bears. And we always knew that they could make amazing stars for Disney nature movie. And that, you know, it's a movie, it's not a documentary. We thought there'd be a wonderful narrative there. Um, we love the idea of telling it in the first person through the eyes of a female polar bear, 15 year old female looking back at her life, because that allowed us to talk a, a wider um, environmental message. Um, but we just knew that they're great stars. They're the kings of the Arctic, and it was a real privilege to film it. And you did mention the unique framing that we have in this documentary as well. So it's not um, a narrator like talking over just general animal things that are happening, but we do have a, a character, basically. We're following a, a specific bear, and it's framed as a narrative through her eyes. So what led you to that specific framework? What do you think like are the benefits of that? Any special challenges that came from framing it that way? I think all of the all of the Disney natures that we've worked on and Alice has worked on more than I have, have all had that central narrative, that character narrative. And we find it a very powerful tool to engage our audiences with the experience of the character that we're trying to put forward. And I think in Polar Bear, perhaps, is where we've taken it to an absolutely new level. You know, we needed to tell a story about a mother polar bear because everything in a bear's life is learned from its mother. We knew that from the outset when we wrote the script. But then we wanted to try and make sure that the people really connected with, an, with a place and an animal that they very seldom go. Very few people get to go to the Arctic. And actually, I think crucial to that was, was telling it in the first person narrative to make that more experiential for the audience, to, to give us a way of language, of a way of storytelling that made the audience engage with the experience of a mother bear. So I think those two things, plus actually also having the amazing talents of Catherine Keener, um, and narrating it, her voice lends so much to the film and neither an Alistair nor I could have dreamt of the chemistry that came together when she began re reading that script. And then just lastly on that is that all of our films are very dependent on a fantastic score. And I think what Harry Gregson Williams has written on this particular film is one of the best scores I've ever heard on a natural history film. It absolutely carries the emotional engagement, the the character engagement, and the and the and the Arctic itself, you know, in a way that only a magician like Harry could 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 do. Absolutely, and I think there's so much to balance here, right? Because this is a story. Anytime you're talking about things happening in nature, there's this inherent harshness. There's like you know the animals that are, you know, fighting for to survive and eating each other. And then we have climate change on top of that with these Arctic bears. Um, so how do you go about balancing this sort of harsh reality and this like more joyful narrative story, especially when you're packaging it for a Disney audience? We're very aware and excited by the challenge that, you know, the Disney audiences, they tell us and quite rightly so, it's age four to 104. And so that's a challenge. But the, the joy of nature is that nature does appeal to every age group. And um, but also, you're right, we need to balance. And we, we were looking for playful sequences like the cubs playing in the ice. And, and, and at the same time, we needed the powerful moments like the, the when the brother of our narrator died, which was a really emotional moment. Actually, in that cutting in the cutting room, that sequence started quite a bit lot longer than it finally came into the film. We reduced it because we didn't want to lose our young audience. And e equally, when the bears were chowing down on the um, the whale car the whale carcass, um, we were careful to make that playful and get, get Harry to write some playful music. We, we reckon the kids will love that bit, bit of the film, uh, even if their parents might put their hands in front of their eyes. <laughs> the parents have to find the balance too. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's true. What do you think makes a strong nature documentary overall? What have you learned in all of your years working on these projects? I think you have to start with the with actually the easiest part of the job is, is the wonder of the natural world, being able to communicate to people all across the world that there are places in the world that are beyond our wildest imaginations in terms of beauty. So I think that that, that 
is actually probably the easiest part of the job because we both know having traveled the world many times over that that, 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 that that's there on a plate. I think the really interesting thing about a wildlife documentary is that you also have to communicate the experience of the animal and you have to make that relatable. And, and that's where, it, uh, where the script plays a large part in, in helping us um, communicate our message. And then further to that, I think we, they do have a moral responsibility, wildlife films. They have, a, they have a responsibility to teach people about the natural world, but also highlight the world and the, the problems that the world is facing. And I think those three things come together beautifully in this film, in my opinion, is that we've managed to choose a, a character and a location that's extraordinary. We've told a story that is unique, and I think it's also got an importance to it that we're very, very proud of. And give me your uh, just quick pitch. Why should everybody go watch Polar Bear when it comes out on Earth Day? Because we will take them to one of the most beautiful places on the planet, a place that um, most people have never been to. And we'll engage them in, a, I think, a really powerful emotional story about, in our view, probably the most beautiful animal on the planet, an animal so perfectly adapted for that habitat. And at the same time, it's a film with a really thoughtful message. It's a very contemporary film. It's a film of our time, of a changing world. And um, yes, I think all of those things together, I think will really entertain and educate the audience. And do you have any other Earth Day recommendations for people who are trying to learn more about these bears or about climate change, um, any other resources that you'd like to direct people to? I think we've, we've been very lucky to be associated with Polar Bears International on this project. They have fantastic resources on their, in their web presence. Um, anything that you need to know or want to know about bears is there. I would highly recommend uh, going to the website for Polar Bears International. I think the other thing is just, it's a broader thing. It's just, it's really important for people to stay curious. If, if you're curious about the natural world, there's encyclopedias of knowledge out there willing to be learned. And I think that's a really powerful thing for people to just remind themselves that to be curious is a, is a very powerful tool. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm looking forward to letting everybody see Polar Bear when it comes out uh, this Earth Day. Mm -hmm.